Hey everybody, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. Now what I'm going to be talking about in this video is pouring and finishing concrete in cold weather. And specifically in freezing cold weather, when temperatures are below the freezing point. But before I get to that, if you're new to this channel, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors and I specialize in all kinds of concrete flat work. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe, hit the bell notification, and you'll be updated when all my new videos come out. I come out with a couple videos a week teaching you guys about how to pour and finish concrete. So what we're doing here this morning is it's below freezing. It's about 15 degrees out when we showed up. And Luke and I were, were taking these insulating blankets off of this floor. And they were using, the general contractor was using the insulating blankets to help protect the sub base, which is gravel here from freezing and it did it it kept it from freezing but I mean it doesn't keep it warm by any means so you know that gravel right there now is really really ice cold it's just not frozen if it was frozen you know we wouldn't want to be pouring concrete on top of it even if there's an inch of frost in that in that gravel it's going to cause a problem when you go pour concrete on it so we t take the insulating blankets off first thing in the morning. It's seven. It's seven a.m. here, and we're putting up our forms in front of the garage doors and the pass door. And I'm checking grade now with my with my laser, and I use that Topcon RL H5B. That's uh that's the one I use all the time. If you've seen any of my other videos, so what I'm doing is I'm going around. I'm checking the dirt grade, and I'm raising. The uh, concrete's going to be four inches thick, so I'm raising the height to the top of the concrete up four inches from the dirt. Now this floor is also going to slope two inches from the back towards the front. So as I set my grades, I'm going to I'm going to mark the front here as as you'll see me doing, and then what I'll do is I'll mark the middle of this floor. And the way I'll raise my grade up is I'll just move my receiver, that little receiver on that grade stick. I'll move that down an inch. And then that's going to raise my floor grade up an inch. I'll mark it. And then I'll, raise, I'll uh, move the receiver down another inch. So it'll be two inches lower now, the receiver will, from where I mark the front, which raises the uh, floor grade up so as you move the receiver down it raises your grade stick up the bottom of the grade stick up so we're going to slope this thing two inches and that's what i'm doing right now now somebody had already snapped a red chalk line you can kind of see it there a little bit and what i'm doing is i'm going around and checking that making sure it's perfect making sure it has the right slope to it and the right thickness to it and if it does then we're going to use that if it didn't, then I would just reshoot a new one. So Luke's getting the boards fastened on. You know, once I get the grade shot, he knows where the top of the forms need to be, and that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna pour the concrete floor to is right at the top of those forms in the front. So the first thing I check when I get there, you know, is a concrete truck showing up. The first thing I check when I get there is the dirt. Is the dirt frozen or not? That's going to make me decide, number one, are we pouring this or are we canceling it? If it's frozen, we cancel. Um, and if it's not, then we can go ahead and do this. As you can see, Luke's fastening those boards. You know, what he's using right there is he's using that battery-operated DeWalt uh, hammer drill. And that's, that's pretty new to us. We, we figured we'd check it out. We usually use an electric one. But that thing there is great. I highly recommend that. I'll have a link for that down in the description. You know, you don't have to run a cord. You don't have to get a generator out. You don't have to find power. Um, those those new 20 volt max batteries, they work really good. And uh, that thing drills really easy into concrete. So, and you can fasten your forms using the, the hex head uh, screws. So, again, check that out down below. So, we got this thing just about ready. The concrete's showing up. The mix we're going to use today for our concrete is going to be a 4,000 PSI mix. And whenever I pour outside like this in the winter, especially when it's below freezing, I always use a 4,000 PSI. 
normally for a garage like this, if it was spring, summer, or fall, we, we use a 3000 PSI, which is our normal floor mix. The reason I bump up to 4000 is because there's quite a bit more cement in 4000. And what the cement does is it actually generates more heat in the mix as it's drying. So concrete will dry or set up or harden, however, whatever term you want to use, by a process called heat of hydration. So when the cement is mixed with water, a chemical reaction takes place um, and heat is generated, which causes the concrete to, to harden or set up. So the 4000 PSI just has more cement in it, which means it's gonna, it's gonna generate more heat and it's gonna harden up quicker in these lower temperatures. Now what we also do is there's, there's 100 and, about 160 degree water in the mix so that's going to help it hydrate and cure quicker. Plus we're adding uh, flake calcium chloride, which is an accelerator. And that's going to help it harden up quicker too. There's no, there's no like uh, antifreeze you can put in this stuff to keep it from freezing. You got to get it to harden. You got to get it to set up. And generally the rule of thumb is you, you want this stuff to reach 500 PSI before it goes through a freeze and thaw cycle. And it'll do that. It'll do that probably in a couple days if you have insulating blankets over it when you're done. But until it gets to that point, you want you gotta keep this stuff from freezing. So, and putting these accelerators in, using the hot water, using the 4000 PSI is a good start to doing that. So we're pouring this concrete out now. We're using a slump of about a probably a five and a half or a six inch slump. And what slump is, slump is how wet or how dry you pour the concrete. A one would be very stiff. It would A one probably wouldn't even come down that chute. And a 10 would be like water. So we're kind of right in, right in between something that's workable. As for you guys that have watched my other videos, you know I always use a water reducing admixture in here so we can we can get this concrete to flow, get it to be more workable without adding a lot of water to it. And that's pretty standard for all our mixes. We use it for everything we do. So it's just Luke and I here today. There's just two of us. Usually there's three of us, but uh, there's just two of us pouring this floor. So you're going to get to see how two guys can pour a, a concrete floor. And this garage floor was 28 by 28. So it's not a huge garage floor, but it's you know, it's a little under 900 square feet for this garage. And we got two loads coming. We got 12 yards of concrete coming. So we'll we'll dump this six yards right out, get that truck out of there, and get that part screeded. And then we'll get that second truck in there and get him mixed up. We don't generally, you know, when the water's this hot, 160 degrees, and we're using flake calcium chloride, we don't generally mix up the trucks like the second truck too far in advance of getting this first truck dumped you know once you put that cal in there with that hot water and that drum starts mixing you're on the clock so you're going to have about 10 15 maybe 20 minutes to get this stuff screeded dumped and screeded out before it starts stiffening up and it makes it hard to work with you can see the steam coming off it from the cold weather. Again, like I said, it was about 15, between 15, 20 degrees here when we're starting to pour. It's supposed to get up right around 32 today in the middle of the afternoon. Sun's going to be up a little bit, but we're not going to get much sun on this today because there was a bunch of trees that are going to be blocking the sun. So right, right now, me and Luca magging our edges to that chalk line. That's going to be our outside grade that we're going to use the screed from. I've got a grade pin in the middle with a nail through it. That's going to be our center grade. And we'll strike our pads off that, our wet pads. We wet screed everything. No pipes, no two by fours, no nothing to go by other than the wet pads. And you can see we're getting that second truck backed in. We put a bag, a bag of that calcium is 50 pounds. So we put a bag and a half of that in six yards to help get this stuff to dry today. So you can see we're striking off our wet pad right there. That's our center grade that has a little bit of slope to it, if you remember. 
now we're just kind of fine tuning the concrete, making sure we're not too high, not too low before we start straight edging. Once we start, we don't really like stopping. We like to get the whole bay screeded without stopping. But with just two of us here and no puddler, sometimes we get to stop in between and readjust if we're high or if we're low. And we're kick screeding. That's what you call kick screeding. So we kick our footprints in as we screed. We don't have to stop. We can just keep moving our way backwards as we screed. And we got that one bay done. So we're gonna set over, finish that bay out real quick. Then we're gonna set over and do that other bay. And this is how two guys screed with a 14 foot straight edge. Kick screed anyway, this is how we do it. So hopefully we're not too high or too low and we can just keep going. Now you can see we had to adjust there. We probably had a little hole there. We had to kick some concrete in and then we can finish screeding that bay out. So as we get the concrete leveled out and screeded, you know, remember I said there was 160 degree water in the concrete. Once that water is mixed in with the, with the cement, the stone and the aggregate, the temperature of the concrete coming out of the truck, uh, it, it doesn't stay 160, it drops because you're mixing the hot water with all that other material. So it's probably about the concrete temperature is right around 70 degrees. Could be 75, but it's probably right around 70. So, you know, if you're pouring this 20 degrees outside, you're pouring 70 degree concrete on top of a really cold, cold gravel, you're gonna get that steam coming off. But what the gravel's gonna do, that really ice cold gravel under there, is it's gonna it's gonna cool that concrete down really fast. So once that concrete temperature gets down to around 40 degrees, the heat of hydration slows down a lot. And that's what's gonna to happen to us today because that sub base is so cold. Now, if we were pouring on top of styrofoam, that would be a whole different story here. This concrete would dry twice as fast, but because we're on really ice cold gravel, that concrete's not gonna dry very fast today. It's just part of the deal. So then we got to figure out, okay, so how are we going to finish this stuff? How are we going to get a good finish on it before it starts getting dark out here and the temperature starts going way down again tonight? So that's what we're thinking, you know, as we're getting going into this job and as we're figuring out how the concrete's drying, um, what we're going to decide, do we finish this by hand, just by hand troweling it? Do we put a power trowel on it? Those are the things we're gonna be thinking about after, right after we get this floor in here and, and figuring out how this concrete dries. So we're getting the second truck dumped out. And again, same thing, six yards, bag and a half of calcium, really hot water. And we're gonna get most of that, most of that second half of that garage poured out before we start screeding it. We'll leave a little bit of a an open area there in case we're, high we can pull the concrete into that open area and we don't have to pull it all out over the form and we'll go through the process again of magging our edges we're striking the pad in front of that doorway to make sure that doorway is nice and level across there and then we'll get that bay screeded out with that 14 foot straight edge you can see i'm watching my end luke's watching his end we're making sure we're scoring we should be leaving a tiny bit of a line with the end of the straight edge. That makes that tells us that we got a nice level flat floor. Even uh, even though this thing slopes from two inches from back to front, you still get a nice flat slope there. If that makes sense, you don't want you don't want highs, you don't want lows. You want this thing to have a nice even plane to it, and. If you're not leaving that line with the end of the straight edge, like a sixteenth of an inch line as you're going, then you know you're not you're not striking off the concrete level. So you can see we're a little bit low in that bay, so we gotta we gotta run a little bit more concrete, push some concrete up. We like to pull back, you know, about an inch roll of concrete when we're straight edging, so we like to have it a little bit high as we're greeting it backwards. 
And anyway, we got that base greeted out. Now I'll get that second half of that bow floated. And I'm using I'm using that bow float from Marshalltown. We get all our tools from Marshalltown, pretty much all our pouring tools and a lot of our finishing tools. If uh, if you're looking for some really good tools, I got a link for them down in the description. They also Marshalltown, you know, gives me a discount for you guys of 10% off. So if you guys want to get any of your tools from there, I got a discount code down there. You can check that out in the description. Just punch that in when you check out. You'll save a bunch of money. Um, but I like that bow float there. It has You twist the handles and it tips the bow float one way. And then you twist the handles the other way. It, and then it tips the edge back the other way. So it's just easy to pull back and forth. So here we are during the finishing process. Now this was about actually about three hours after we got done pouring. So we got done pouring about eight o'clock it's now around 11 o'clock and you know this concrete's really not drying that good today it's temperatures right up into the high 20s it's right around 27 28 degrees now but what we're doing is we're tapering the garage doors we're putting a little slope on the garage doors which is pretty normal practice for us so from from where that board is where we put our form on to the inside of that concrete wall that's about eight inches we slope that little area so when the garage door sits down on the concrete, uh, any water, any rain that hits the outside of the garage door runs down the door, hits that sloped area, and it runs out of the garage, not back under the door. So we're getting that, though both those doors tapered off, and you know we we dig that down about a half inch there, and then we just cut in a nice taper using our mags. And then what we're trying to figure out now is do we do we wait, let this concrete get harder and put a power trowel on it, or do we finish it by hand? What we determined was we're going to have to finish this by hand today. It's just not going to dry fast enough to put a power trowel on. So we get out our knee boards there. You can see those stainless steel knee boards we got. Those are, those are down in the description too, guys, if you want to check them out. And we're just magging it out now. So... We're gonna, this first pass, we'll just mag float the surface. We'll just get it magged out, get out the bull float lines, you know, fill in any little dimples, any little highs, lows, we'll smooth them off. And if there was any imperfections left by the bull float, we'll get those all magged out. And we're not hand troweling it yet. I'm, I'm using a hand trowel for leverage and for balance, but I'm just mag floating it in. You don't wanna seal off the surface too early with a hand trowel or you could trap some moisture under the surface and that's going to lead to blisters or spalling later on down the road so just mag float it the mag tends to leave the surface a little bit more open so it can breathe and allow some of that moisture to escape out of the surface before you hand trowel it so luke and i were both just magging it you know we go down we we can take about a six or a seven foot wide area when we mag it and we'll just go down one way, work our way back, and then we'll just jump off, jump out the, the foundation, get over the top of the wall. We try not to come in and out where the garage doors are. We, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to leave a, a low spot there from the, from the knee boards by continually coming in and out of the same spot in front of the doors. So that's why we're jumping off over there on the edge. Now what Luke's doing right now, there was one little spot in there that was a little bit firmer than the rest. So he went back in and he hand troweled that one little spot there before he jumped out. And so what we're going to do, I see I'm magging in front of the garage doors, making sure that's all nice and tapered good. So this is the first pass and we had to let that sit for about an hour before we're getting on it here for the second pass. Now it's getting on into the afternoon now. It's around it's around two o'clock in the afternoon now. Remember we started pouring at seven, so and this is only the second finishing pass. So now we're getting on here with our hand trials. And we're troweling it for the first time. Once again, remember what I said earlier that concrete pouring on top of that ice cold dirt, it just it what it did was it sucked the heat right out of that concrete and it's just setting up really, really slow today because 
the the bottom of that concrete's really cold and the air temperature outside is really cold so that does not you know make for a really good environment for the concrete to dry very fast now it is drying though it's not freezing it is drying but it's just really really slow and if if we were to try to finish this with a power trial you know we'd be here all night trying to get a good finish on this now when you finish stuff by hand like this you can get a a good finish on the surface a lot quicker than you would if you're using a power trial the power trial is just going to work up so much more moisture than you would if if you do it by hand now years ago when i first started doing concrete you know we, we didn't hand wipe stuff like this i would have just used a power trial not knowing i could have got a really good finish on it just doing it this way so i had you know i had floors where i spent all night on but over the years you learn and that's what i'm trying to teach you guys is you know you don't have to put a power trial on to get a really good finish if, if you're pretty good at hand wiping so you know save yourself a bunch of time and get a good finish on it and then just get it get it done you know make it look nice and get it done so this is our third pass this is about 3 30 now in the afternoon so it was about another hour and it gets dark here at four o'clock now so we want to make sure we get a good finish on this and then we still got to get it covered with those blankets again too we can't leave this exposed it's going to get way down below freezing again tonight so we got to get the blankets on this thing get it covered get it protected and you know put a bunch of wood and stuff on the blanket so the wind doesn't blow the blankets off now we're not going to be able to saw expansion joints in this today it's just too cold so what we'll do is we'll come back the next day you know and uncover it real quick snap our chalk lines and cut our expansion joints with something like this we're just going to cut make one cut each way down the middle so in between the garage doors there'll be a cut going from front to back and then there'll be another cut right in the middle going the other way so we're going to get this one last hand trial finish on it and this going to be really smooth it'll be plenty smooth enough for a garage floor if uh like i said if this had been styrofoam on it under it we probably could have powered trial this today the styrofoam makes that much of a difference under the concrete it doesn't the styrofoam doesn't allow the concrete to cool off so fast so the heat of hydration the setting up time is a lot quicker with styrofoam under it So we're going to finish this up, get that last hand trial on it, and we're going to, what Luke's doing now, he's putting a light broom finish on those slopes in front of those doors. That's what we normally do, and I'm running the edger there to round that edge off, and that'll finish up the concrete floor in this freezing cold weather. There we go. We got it all covered up, protected, and that's how you pour and finish concrete when the temperatures are below freezing, guys. So any question, leave me, you know, leave me a comment down there in the comments. You know, hit the like button if you like this, and we'll see you on the next one.